go with that. All right. I appreciate Boris has got taller since I used to watch him on Bullwinkle, didn't he? Hallelujah. He got cut down to size through this, I think, maybe. Praise God. You know, while we're making this transition, I believe Jim has a testimony to share. It has nothing to do with football, right? Okay, hallelujah. I, I didn't think you had anything good to say. <laughs> oh, good Lord, we don't have that much time. <laughs> don't give him the microphone. Ah. Uh, right here. By the way, thanks, Joanna, for putting one in every pew. Appreciate that. Um, real quick, uh, most of you know Kayla went in for surgery on Wednesday. Um, and just to kind of explain a little bit, um, we went the week before on Friday of Thanksgiving, and they, she went through excruciating testing, and they did all this stuff with CAT scans and everything. They found that she had, which most of you know in February, uh, her bowel was twisted. We almost actually lost her, and they found it in time, thank God. And they did emergency surgery, and everything worked out well with that. But she still had some issues. But she had two ulcers and some um, adhesions and a bowel blockage. And that's what they found on the CAT scan. I mean, we went and met with the surgeon, and they, I seen it all and everything like that. So we were looking at four hours of surgery on Wednesday, and then at the minimum probably two weeks of recovery of her being in the hospital. So just to explain how your prayers and how God works and how awesome God is, is that she went in for surgery um, at 9.30, and by 10 o'clock, the surgeon was already out there, which was mind-boggling. And he said, when we cut her open, he said, I couldn't even find the one hernia. The other hernia was gone. There's no, there was no adhesions. And he said the bowel blockage was just an area that the bowel was actually moving and they actually stitched it off and everything like that. She's already up walking around. Um, they're looking for her to come home hopefully tomorrow or Christmas Day, which is good. So that's how I just want to share that with you. Um, and just to tell you guys, even from her message from her, thank you so much um, uh, for your prayers and for the church and the blessing that this church is because we couldn't do it without you guys. I mean, honestly, praying and standing behind us, and it's it's such a blessing, um, you know. But the cool thing about it all is too that what God, what man says, is impossible. They said she wouldn't live to be 17 years old, and she's lived well past that, and she's already on the mend, and she's already doing well. And this, like Pastor prayed last Sunday, that you know, and we're believing it. She's claiming it that this is the last surgery, and we're going to be back to get her getting back to normal. And even on that day, we had some other things going on. Dad was at the other spot, so I'm going to let him share that. So, But just to keep sharing about just the miracles that God performed in our life just in one morning within an hour's worth of time. Yeah, we were, we were really blessed to hear about Kayla. But um, those of you that don't know, of course, you, I, I know you realize that Gene and I are uh, raising Jim's two boys, Braden and Avery. Well, on Wednesday at 1030, we had to be in Lawrenceburg at Dearborn County Courthouse because we were... Uh, getting challenged again to uh, the other set of uh, the other grandfather not set of grandparents but anyway they were challenging us that we weren't we weren't doing what was right and everything else and they were trying to get the boys away from us that day so we come up on Sunday also when uh, to get prayer uh, for that one of the things that pastor prayed for was the fact to um, shut the mouths of the enemy not to allow the enemy to come against you you know and say things and stuff and I was very grateful for the pastor for saying that because on the way down there, I prayed a prayer uh, for Gina and I also. And in that, in that prayer, you don't have to remind God, but I went ahead and reminded him anyway. I said, remember what my pastor prayed on Sunday morning to, to keep the mouths of the enemy shut. And pastor, sure enough, he did that. We were supposed to be there. They allowed a two-hour window uh, for the other set to present everything else. When we got down there, we went in the courtroom at uh, 1030 was what time we were supposed to go in there. We went in there and we were sitting there for just a few minutes and our lawyer came by and said, uh, said, we're going in into another room, said, we're going to take a little break. Uh, we'll be back, said, just, you know, just relax. Everything's going to be okay. So they went in another room, our lawyer, their lawyer, and the guardian and Lydum uh, went in also. Um, for those of you who don't know, just real fast, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to try to do this real quick. Okay. 
But anyway, a garden and light them. Basically, what they do is they come, they come and visit your house, which is our home. Basically, they are the voice of the boys. I mean, it makes no difference what we say. We could say anything we want to. But if a guardian light him actually says the same things that we would say that the boys have shared with her and stuff, that really, that really swings high for, for the judge. I mean, she really, the judge really, any judge really looks on that for a guardian and light him. And basically, she was the voice of the boys. And uh, I thank God for the, for the one that he sent us uh, this time. Um, because the one we had before, well, I'm not going to go into that. But anyway, this one, this one really really stood for the boys and everything else, and, and she really helped helped out and everything. But what was supposed to take two hours, basically it, it, did, it took an hour and a half, but what happened was normally the, uh, the attorney really, for the other side, the last time when we, were in, when we were in the trial for the guardianship of the boys, she basically really tore us apart and everything. But with the prayer that the pastor prayed and, and the one that I also prayed, basically closed her mouth because she didn't say anything. Matter of fact, let me tell you something, folks. They met for 20 minutes. They came out. They um, told us what, you know, each side kind of wanted, you know, to agree, agree uh, upon everything. And we only seen the judge for maybe 15 minutes was all we seen. And basically it was to read the things that, that were supposed to be done this next time and everything. And then we, we all agreed upon that. And basically that was it. One th one, two things that they, that they really did, which we were thankful for, number one, we kind of wanted to stay out of um, having visits during the week. And we always had, always in the past, had to go to Lawrenceburg. Well, God worked it out, and the lawyer said, well, they still want uh, visits. And I go, I don't know about that. He said, well, don't you, he said, you have a problem going 15, 20 minutes? And I looked at him, I said, what do you mean driving 15, 20 minutes? Well, God set it up and everything, and they set it up. So we're still having uh, visitations, but it's going to be in Batesville. So we just had to drive from Greensburg to Batesville on Tuesday nights for three hours. So that, that was truly a blessing. Another one was where we had to meet at. It always We had to drive to Lawrenceburg. We always did. Well, for every other weekend, the visitation is we're going to be meeting in Harrison at Home Depot, now Harrison, Ohio, which is only maybe a half hour for us, maybe, maybe you know, not even that long. But it's just a straight shot on the interstate. So God worked that out for us, too. So let me tell you something, folks. God still is at work. He hasn't stopped. He's still at work. He's, work. he's working in our lives. He worked with Kayla, and he worked with us. And, yes, we do have the, still have the boys. That was the biggest thing. The boys were, they were, they were really stressing. I mean, they really were, and you could tell that um, le leading up to this. So, <laughs> anyway, huh? Punch me. And one other thing, you know, I always talk about football. You know me. And I always get, yeah, but you give me the mic. See, that was your mistake. <laughs> That's right. Congratulations to the Cowboys. They did beat Pittsburgh last week. We play Cincinnati this week. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. We'll just see what happens. But I'll give it. Wait a minute. I'm not done yet. Oh, here you go, Pastor. Thank, thank you, though. I once, once again, what Jim said, thanks for all your prayers. They, we do appreciate it. We love this church. And we're thankful we're a part of it. And the boys still continue to can be a part of it, too. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Next year's our shepherds are having those shepherd crooks, not just a staff. You know what I mean? Would you get them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you what. God does still answer prayer. And, and right before service, Bill was telling me, it was your grandmother's had a stroke? You just got called this morning? So we want to pray for her. Are there any other prayer requests? Real quick. Yes, Terry. Okay. Leukemia. Cancer, yes, for Glenn. Okay. Lita. I can't hear you. Okay, Brenda.
Okay. Okay. We'll pray for them, for the baby. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, Dwight. Okay, Connor. Oh, yes. Still praying for them. Yes, Gene. Okay. All right. Well, there's a lot of requests. Let's go to the Lord. Amen. And lift all these matters up. Father, we just give you the praise and the glory. We thank you today that you are an awesome God and you are able, Lord, to operate and to work in the lives of every person who's mentioned. Even as you care about their salvation, you care about their lives. You came that we might have life and that more abundantly. So we just pray and speak life to each and every one of these situations. Father, to the person with leukemia, the one with cancer, the one that's had the heart attack, to this baby that uh, is still clinging to life there in that womb. We speak forth life now in the name of Jesus and protection. We pray, Father, for, uh, for the uh, family friend back here, Lord, that you would minister in that situation. We just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for uh, Bill's grandmother. We come against whatever's attacking her right now. We thank you for healing there. We thank you for Jennifer, and we speak healing to her right now. Command all pain to be gone from her body. We thank you for a complete and total healing there. Lord, I know there was a lot of requests this morning. We pray for John and his feet. I just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that you are our healer and you're able to do this, and we thank you for it. We pray for those who've suffered loss, the Meisters, the people in Connecticut. We thank you for being with them and ministering to them, Father, even at this time, that your spirit, your power would be with them. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, that, that grace would arise. I pray, Father, that all those churches that are surrounding that area would be able to reach forth and minister to the needs of the people. We pray that you'd heal the brokenhearted, the Meisters and everyone in Connecticut. We just thank you for that, and we just give you the praise, Lord. You're able to minister, and we give you the glory for it. We thank you in the name of Jesus for it, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're all glad for saved relatives. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I know it's going to be a leap. You know, every year, I, you know, when it comes to pastoring, holidays are a mixed blessing. I mean, honestly, it is. Because every year, you're celebrating the same thing over and over, and you have to come up with different ways of trying to express our joy or what we feel or what we believe about that situation so every Easter every Christmas we have to come up with something and usually sometimes we have help a lot of times we have plays like we did today and you know that kind of moves things along uh, didn't they do a good job amen hallelujah good job kids hallelujah so it's a leap sometimes to come up with things. You know, you go over the same passages a lot of times. Today I've come up with a totally different passage for our message. So we're going to be in the book of Hebrews. And if you'd like to turn there with me, we'll be in chapter 1. I was really focusing this year on the babe in the manger. You know, it's hard to grasp your head and get it wrapped around the fact that Jesus came and inhabited a human body amen that he was God that he was with God and then he came down here and took human form just so that he could suffer on the cross for you and me I mean it's just almost mind-blowing to try to get your head wrapped around that and when you think about all the angels that come and worshiped him and all the things that happened you know it's it's just really it's just like for some people I can see why they have a trouble with the story but for those of us who believe, it's just a confirmation of how much God loves us. Amen? 
It is. It's just a confirmation of that. You know, as we look in Hebrews, I'd just like to read the first four verses, and then I'm going to pray, and then we'll read some more. It said, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus for your awesome goodness, and I thank you for your word this morning. I pray, Father, that we're able to maintain our focus and that everything, Lord, with the other kids and stuff in here that are extra, we thank you that we can maintain it this morning while we just cover this very important point. You sent your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for us. He was born as a child. He stepped out of his godly atmosphere into humanity. And we thank you this morning that we might be able to understand it as best as we can. And we give you the praise for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Wayne Grudem said this about the whole thing. He said, It is by far the most amazing miracle of the entire Bible, far more amazing than the resurrection and more amazing even than the creation of the universe. The fact that the infinite, omnipotent, eternal Son of God could become man and join himself to a human nature forever so that infinite God became one person with finite man, it will remain for eternity the most profound miracle and the most profound mystery in all the universe. And whether we agree that we think that's the greatest miracle, it certainly is a big one. Amen? I mean, God stepped out of his position to come and be like us. And sometimes we think, why would anybody want to be like us? Amen? You know, uh, what, what is man that you are mindful of him? That's what the psalmist said. What is man that he's mindful of him? Well, man... And the title of my sermon is, Man is a Little Lower Than the Angels, according to the Scriptures. In fact, as we read on here, we're going to see a few things. But first, let's look at verses 2 and 3. It says that through him also he made the worlds. First, in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And it says in verse 3, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Hallelujah. God came and inhabited a human form. I mean, it's mind-blowing. You know, he was the Son of God. It says in the end that God's going to light the entire heavens. Amen. There's not going to need, uh, be a need for light in the new heavens and the new earth. It's going to be lit by the presence of God. I think about the, the three, uh, we call them wise men, that followed the star. They saw the light. Amen. And they followed the star. Think about that. So many people were living in darkness at that time. And they didn't see the light. They didn't follow the star. They didn't understand the significance of it. And when we think about Christmas, how many people celebrate Christmas, but they're not really celebrating Christmas? They're not celebrating the birth of Christ. They're just having a holiday. It's a day off work for them, or it's a day to get presents, or it's a day to, you know, decorate the house. Someone sent us a, a, a thing. It was a, like the, uh, what were they calling the tree? It wasn't a Christmas tree. They were changing the name of the Christmas tree to something else, the gift tree or the light tree or something. You know, everything's going to, you know, take Christmas out of it all. Don't have your stores say Christmas, Merry Christmas anymore. You say Happy Holidays or whatever. We can be a little too politically correct, I think. I don't, I don't understand why. I understand. I mean, the people who don't want to accept the reality have to have something else to believe in. So they believe in consumerism. They believe in anything but the truth. And they've got to, they've got to bring the truth down because you can't have a truth up there that you don't want to believe in. 
It's not that you can't believe in it. You just don't want to. You can't have that up there shining like the star over Bethlehem. You have to pull it down. The problem is that this light can't be hid. Amen. Every country that's ever tried to hide the light, the light shines forth anyway. The underground church in China is bigger than the church probably in many countries. Why? Because they tried to hide it. Same thing happened in Russia and all these other countries where they tried to take away the gospel. In fact, a lot of the people now realize if they take that away, you take away the moral fiber of your country, and your country begins to go to hell, literally. And in every way you can think, it begins to go down. Why? Because we have no reason to serve God. It's kind of interesting that, you know, when it comes to... Uh, rehabilitation and trying to uh, get people to act right and we have crimes and uh, the more the more that we take God out of the equation the easier we are on the criminals the faster we're going to let them out of jail and all this kind of stuff if there's no deterrent then what's going to happen amen John chapter 1, verses 9 through 13 say this, That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. And they still don't know him. Amen? He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. If we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if we believe that He came here for the express purpose to die on the cross for us, and we accept what He did, we are children of God. Amen? Now, some people say, oh, well, you know, we're all God's children. I don't think that's biblical. There are people who didn't recognize Him for who He was. There are people who are on the wrong path. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love them. He wouldn't have sent Jesus in the first place. While we were yet sinners, he still loved us. Amen? The problem is, is there has to become a recognition of what he did. There has to become an acceptance. We have to receive the child. Some people don't receive the child. Angels we have heard on high, singing sweetly o'er the plains. Some of these Christmas songs, i got to tell you, tear me up, you know? I can't even get the words to come out of my mouth right. I don't even know. There's just like foreign to me or something. I don't know, you know? They didn't sing a lot of those in the bars I used to hang in, okay? <laughs> Thank God I got, I got better, amen? Hallelujah. Let's read on in Hebrews. It says, For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. You know, there's always been this fascination with the angels in the story of the, of the, of the birth. There's been a fascination with angels. And, and a few years ago, every other book that was written was about angels. Angels this, angels that. Get in touch with your angel. You know, I, I believe, I, I have sensed the presence of angels before. I, I really believe that. I felt I felt movement go around me, just different things. I thought angels were there. I've never seen one, and probably it's, I believe it's going to happen. Probably I'm just not ready, because right now if it happened, it would be like this. The angels just be shaking his head, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, dear God, what's, what's wrong with him? You know, I don't know that I want to see my angel right away. But if I did, I still wouldn't be seeing anything as great as Jesus. Hallelujah. When I see Jesus, I'm going to fall on my face. Hallelujah. There's that song, you know, uh, what's that song about when, you, when would I, will I dance before you and all that? Yeah. I, don't, you know, I, think, uh, I think I'm going to stand there and be still or I'm going to fall on my face. I'm going to cry. I don't know what I'm going to do. I may be very extremely happy that I made it. Hallelujah. <laughs> We've been watching the John Bevere videos on uh, Driven by Eternity, and they've been really excellent, but it's talking about the judgment seat. And you know, a lot of Christians don't believe that, that we're going to stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ, but we are. We're not being judged for salvation. We're being judged on basically the things we did and didn't do. That's a different sermon. 
We'll get to that one. Hallelujah. That's a different sermon. Let's read on here. These angels, it says, For which of his angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And that's what happened. Amen. When this baby was born and brought into the world, the heavenly host came forth. They sang. The shepherds were told about it. They went and worshipped the, the, the three wise guys showed up hallelujah i didn't realize i noticed this morning that one of them was a shriner at least that's the hat looked like i didn't know <laughs> hallelujah and of the angels he says who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire but to the sun he says your throne O god is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions and you Lord in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth the heavens are the work of your hand they perish but you remain and they will all grow old like a garment like a cloak you will fold them up and they will be changed but you are the same and your years will not fail this little baby who was involved in the creation of all heaven and earth I mean talk about the job role he had in heaven he was involved in the creation of all heaven and earth and he said all right I'm gonna take this new assignment I'm gonna leave this here place where I am right here by the throne of God and I'm gonna come down and become a baby and act like a human my gosh can you imagine that how long was Mary in labor thousands of years because it took that long for this point to come now she herself wasn't but this baby was coming forth for a long time he was prophesied way 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 back there that's how the guys knew to go to King Herod and say where was Bethlehem because it was written already out and they knew that they were gonna go worship this new king he was born a king but he was born in the most humblest of circumstances the most humblest people, shepherds, came to worship him. The richest people, these guys came with gold and frankincense and myrrh. He speaks to all humanity through his humanness. You know, there's something that you hear a lot of preachers say, you know, ministry would be great if it wasn't for the people. Because our humanity is what we have to deal with. We have to deal with people, amen? All of us have to deal with ourselves. We have to deal with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We have to deal with, you know, all sorts of things. And sometimes church isn't as fun as it ought to be. That's because we get our focus off of what it's supposed to be about. Amen? It's supposed to be about a purpose. It's supposed to be about people recognizing Jesus for who he is, the very Son of God who came to die on a cross for them. Now he came, this one who was higher than the angels, and inhabited the body of a human. He became a human so that he could lift us up. Because at this point, we're not there yet. Amen? Let's just read on. It says, But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits, talking about the angels, sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Think about this. All of us who receive salvation have angels who work for us. Now, I don't get up in the morning and tell my angels what to do. Amen? But when I pray to the Heavenly Father, I believe that He tells them what to do. I believe that He tells them. Now, I know I've read some books where you're supposed to tell your angels to go do this and go do that. And my coffee, I still have to get up and make it every morning. Amen? Actually, that's a lie. Cheryl gets up and makes it. But... Hallelujah. And brings me a cup and rubs my back before I get out of bed. But that's just, you men should have said, amen, listen, honey, listen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation 
which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him, God also bearing witnesses or witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Just think about this. God confirms his words with signs, wonders, miracles. One of the biggest miracles he did was the confirmation of his word with the birth of this child, with the star in the sky, with these guys being able to tell that the baby was going to be born. Just think about all that. I mean, he put some things into place and into motion that most people didn't figure out at all. But it's been spoken to us now. You know, he spoke through prophets in various times, but now he's speaking through his son Jesus to us. How can we neglect so great a salvation? How can we hear about the, the story of Christ's birth and his death and resurrection without us being moved? You know, I, I can harden my heart against anything. I don't have to cry when I see things on television, you know, that are horrible. I don't have to, I don't have to get moved when, when people appeal to me for help. I don't have to allow my, my conscience to be stirred in any way. And people can do the same thing with the Word of God and with the truth. They can close themselves off to it. They can shut the door to it. You don't have to listen to it. You probably wouldn't be here this morning if you wasn't at least open to it. Amen? We can't neglect this salvation. We can't neglect it. You can't let it go. Now, us as Christians have to pay heed because we could drift away. But what about the ones who've never answered the call? What about the ones who haven't seen the light, so to speak? What about the ones who've never had an opportunity? We've got to have a heart and mind for them as well, amen? We've got to think about what it is that they need in their lives. Notice it says here in verse number 1 in chapter 2, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed. You know, if we really believe that this word of God is true, then we have to also believe that it's a responsibility of ours to share it because we've been given the Great Commission. You know, mankind is different than what Jesus is and was. We're different than the angels. If we read on here, it says, For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him, which of course we know is death. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for every man. Jesus left his high estate above all heavenly creation that he helped to create and put himself under angels in his position because he came in and became a man. But because he suffered this death, because he died for us on the cross, he was able to take us and lift us up where now we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Everything's been put under his feet. Therefore, we are placed in a higher position than what even the angels are in. Glory to God. We got promoted. Hallelujah. Old, stinky man, Mongolians, and all those others has been raised up to a high position. Now think about this. It says that we now have access into the throne room of God. Amen? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 that we can come boldly and go into the throne room and receive grace in the time of need. The reason we can go in there is because we're already by the throne room. Hallelujah. Amen? We're seated with Christ. We're right there where we can have access the only difference between you and someone who's not saved is our access. Because we have been saved, we've been made elevated into a different position. Now angels work for us. They're ministers of flame who minister for the heirs of salvation. They don't work for everybody else. Now that doesn't mean that they might not have angels waiting on, you know, I don't know how all that works. We don't have the angel handbook, even if ten people's written them. 
throw them in the trash. We don't know. We only know what the Bible tells us. Hallelujah. And what it tells us is, is that he came and made himself lower than them so that he could take us and place us in a higher place. What does all that mean? Well, it means that we shouldn't neglect this salvation. It means that we need to really be paying attention. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 3, I'm going to skip some verses here. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness when your fathers tested and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said that they always go astray in their hearts and that they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath that they shall not enter into the rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Today. We can't harden our hearts today. The Bible tells us that today is the day of salvation. Amen? Today is the day. Not just tomorrow. I've met a lot of people who said, well, yeah, I'm just not ready. Ever met anybody like that? They're just not ready to get saved. What happens, what has to happen for somebody to get ready? Now, I know someone can get saved and do it on their deathbed. I've prayed with people. But, man, you can't take a chance because you don't know when that day is going to be. It's appointed unto man wants to die and then the judgment. You don't know when it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. Unless Jesus comes back, we're all going to die. And if you're not ready to die, you're not ready for him to come back either. Don't want to be around if I'm not ready. Now, we as Christians have to be mindful of these things so that we stay ready. Amen? We have to keep on track. We've got to keep our confidence steadfast. We've got to hang on as much as we can. It doesn't mean that we don't fail and that we don't stumble. It doesn't mean that, you know... Things sometimes don't turn out the way that we think that they should. You know, one of the greatest joys of watching the, watching the plays is, is knowing that somewhere along the line, somebody's going to do something that ain't quite right, you know. That, there was a few kids I couldn't take my eyes off of today, you know what I mean? Usually that way. And, there, and, and we all think, oh, isn't that cute? Well, God thinks you're cute. God has his eye on you. We mess up and we do things, and he still loves us. He wants us to get it right. He wants us to do our best. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to work out the salvation of our souls, you know. But we're his children. If we have received Christ as our Savior. Amen. Joanna's coming back to the stage here. She's going to be playing Christmas music because she loves it so well. Hallelujah. Probably, oh, come let us adore him. One of those easy ones. And uh, what we're going to do is give you an opportunity this morning. You know, there's a, there's a difference between knowing something and doing something. Amen? I know that the oil needs to be changed in my car. How many of you know that you have to do that? Amen. Young people, if you didn't know that, you have to do that. Hallelujah. Some, you may not have to do it yourself, but the oil needs to be changed. Amen. Just knowing it doesn't mean that it gets done. Somebody has to do it. There's a cost for that oil to be changed. There's some labor that's involved. Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. He already paid the price. He's already went through the labor of being a human being. Now he's resurrected and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. The question is whether we're going to ignore our responsibility in it. 
Are we going to receive Christ as our Savior or not? Are we just going to say, well, I know I should get saved. Oh, I know I should change the oil in my car. How many know if you don't, before it's all over with, the thing's not going to work? It's going to be smoking, amen? Well, if you don't receive Christ as your Savior, you will be too. Unfortunately. Hallelujah. Eternity, smoking or non-smoking, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. A little babe in a manger. The Bible tells us a little child shall lead them. If you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess the, with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. There's the believing part and the confessing part. Jesus said, if you'll, conf if you'll not confess me before men, I'll not confess you before the Father. So if we don't make a public confession of faith at some point in our lives, if we don't accept Jesus as our Savior, Peter said, repent. Amen. And be baptized. If we don't follow the commands of the Scripture, we miss out. It's a pretty simple thing. It's a lot easier to get saved than it is to live the life Jesus did, knowing that he was born to die for us. His, his sacrifice, his gift to mankind, the Christmas present that he gave to us was him. If you want to receive that present this morning, I'm going to invite you to come to this altar in a minute, and you can receive Jesus. We're just going to pray with you some simple prayer. You know, the vast majority of everybody in here has already done this. At some point, at some time, they've asked Jesus to be their Savior. If you believe he's the Son of God and he died on the cross for you, take the next step. Don't just be like the person who doesn't change the oil in the car, even though he knows he should. Go ahead and take the step. Make the right step today. Amen. I'm going to tell everybody to stand, if you would, please. Yes, we're getting done early. That happens on Christmas play day. Hallelujah. You guys will be wanting to have plays every month now. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to invite anyone that wants to to come down and give their heart to Jesus. Don't worry about what people think. Oh, come and adore him. Amen. Father, I thank you today for every person who's here. I thank you for your grace and your love. I thank you for being with each one of us right now. Lord, if there's even one person here this morning who doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray for them. I pray that they would let go of things that hold them back, anything that would keep them from answering the call of God. That one who died on the cross for them so long ago, who we celebrate uh, his birth, is waiting for them to respond. Even as the three from the Orient came and the shepherds and even the angels to worship him, I pray, Father, today that they would come forth, that there's even one person here, that they would move on it and they would accept Christ as their Savior today. I pray salvation go forth, Father. I pray that the call, the conviction, those things that have to operate in a person's heart would go forth. I pray that any hardness of heart that exists would be softened and that the people would be set free that they might worship you lord let them become heirs of salvation and children of god this morning at this altar and we praise you for it in the name of jesus you know while everybody's got their head bowed you know sometimes people have to make a first step before they can make a long walk if you're here this morning and you know you need jesus christ as your savior you've never asked him to be your lord i want you to raise your hand up real high just so that I'll know you're here. Just so that I'll know that you're wanting to respond to this altar call. Anyone at all, you know that you need Jesus. You've never asked him in your heart. And you know that you need to. Just lift up your hand. We're not in any hurry this morning. We're going to get out early anyway. You're not going to keep us late. He died for you on a cross. 
All you got to do is die to self for a few minutes and just receive him as your Savior. Anyone at all, just raise up your hand. Is everybody here saved then? Everyone here know Christ as their Savior? Because if you don't, this is a perfect opportunity. You'll remember this for the rest of eternity. Not just the rest of your life. The rest of eternity. Because that's how long salvation lasts. Anyone at all. Do you need Jesus this morning as your Savior? Now, some may be wondering why we're taking so long, because it's that important. It's that important. Anyone. Maybe you're here this morning, you can say, I've neglected my salvation. I've asked Jesus to be my Savior, but I haven't been living like it. I haven't been cautious. I haven't been watching over myself the way I should. I need to get back on track. I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar. I'll just pray a group prayer because we all need to be reminded of these things. But if that's you and you know, I, 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 I'm going to respond to that prayer when you pray it. I need, to, I need to set things right in my heart. Just lift up your hand. I see some hands going up. Hands going up. Hands going up. You know, you've got to get some things right. You're just not, things just aren't floating right for you. Yes, I see the hands. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray for our brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's pray for ourselves that we might stay on track if we are. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the Christmas story. I thank you for the, the truth of your word. I thank you for the ability that we have to be able to enter into the things of God. I thank you that Jesus prepared a way for us. And I thank you, Lord, that each one of us who have been saved have the power of the Holy Spirit available to us to be able to live the life we're supposed to. I pray for every person in this room, whether they raised their hand or not, that they might live for Jesus, that they might live for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that they might live for the one who means more to humanity than anyone else because he's the one who came. Lord God, I pray that we might be ever mindful of this salvation that has been brought forth, that we might live according to the precepts, the commands of the Word of God, and to the things that are on our hearts. Let us not harden our hearts and drift away. Let us stay tender towards you. Let us stay in church. Let us stay worshiping you and reading your Word and praying to you so that we may be conscious of your presence in our life every day. I praise you for it, Lord. I give you the glory. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name for this day. I thank you for Christmas. I thank you for our blessings. I thank you that we might live appropriately. Lord, none of us want to be on the naughty list. Hallelujah. And we praise you that we not be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, okay well... Before we had an opportunity to pray for Bill's grandmother, apparently she passed away, uh, so they've already left. But we want to pray for their family, amen. It's a tough time for someone to pass away at this time of year, and you all know, uh, everybody knows somebody that did, and we all, you know, have to deal with it. But let's lift their family up. Father, I just thank you for being with the, the Wagners and uh, all the family members. We just ask that your, your ministry would begin with them, Lord. We know that you can give us the peace that passes all understanding, that you're nigh unto them who have a contrite spirit and a broken heart. So we pray, Father, that you draw close to them now. Let Bill and Grace be able to love those family members that don't know you and let them be able to show the love of Christ and let your, let your praise go forth. We pray that something good will come out of this that has happened, that some hearts will be turned to you or something will happen, Lord, that will be a blessing in the long run. We just pray. We thank you for your ministry going forth in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, as we go from this place, go with us. Lord, I pray that every family here have the kind of Christmas that, that they desire, that it be a blessing, that they be, that they be with friends and family, or that they have 
uh, what they have need of. I pray if any are in lack, Lord, that you will bless them. I pray that the Spirit of God will enrich them. I just ask, Father, that we have a safe and happy time throughout this entire uh, upcoming week or two. Lord, let all the, all the holidays be blessed, but especially bless Christmas because we celebrate your birth. We give you the praise.